Hey everyone and welcome to the Bradford expansion, or rather the tactical legacy pack, but that sounds really boring. So if you don't know, this was announced just recently and it's already out as of today. And the best part is that it's free if you previously owned War of the Chosen, at least for a limited time. And the most important thing it adds are legacy operations. So these are mini campaigns about the events between XCOM 1 and XCOM 2. So I'm quite looking forward to that. And the Tactical Legacy Pack also includes 28 remastered maps from XCOM 1, which are also added to the map generation system for regular campaigns. So that is definitely a good thing. Quite looking forward to playing all of those. In any case, we are going to start from Legacy Operations. And the first one is Blast from the Past. Having survived the alien assault on XCOM HQ, a broken down Central Officer Bradford has been living on the fringes since that harrowing day. Now, a year or so later, Central has fallen in with a few hardy souls doing what they can to survive the spreading alien occupation. Spurred on by the thought of finding any remnants of his beloved XCOM, Central sets off with his new friends following a map of unknown origins. Alright then, so we got Bradford. We got Sophia, we got Bao, and we got Daryl. Specialist, Ranger, Sharpshooter, and Grenadier. And it looks like there's an option to generate a new resistance operation. Alright then. So, seven missions. Rookie, Story, Nightmare, and Legend. And apparently we can't pick Legend, okay. Well then, we'll do Nightmare in that case. All right, Should be people. fun. Story time. This was almost 20 years ago, so my memory might be a little hazy. With XCOM gone and no sign of any survivors from HQ, I had somehow fallen in with a couple of other misfits the aliens hadn't managed to kill yet. We mostly kept our heads down and scavenged what we could. Until one day we found a map. A map claiming to point towards a human sanctuary. A gathering place for those of us still out there. We were suspicious, of course, but we didn't really have much else to lose. Five minutes in either direction and we would have never met. But for whatever reason, my little group seemed to get along pretty well. We weren't much more than wandering vagabonds at that point, but the map gave us a purpose. Something to work towards. That meant moving through occupied territory, though. So this was sure to be a test of our resolve. Alright then, mission scoring. 10,000 for completing the objective, 12,000 for enemy kills, 1,000 wounded soldier penalty, 5,000 soldier killed penalty. An early bird bonus is granted for scoring mission objectives and kills on the first turn. This bonus is reduced each turn until it expires. Complete objectives and kill enemies quickly to earn the most points. Alright then, well, let's get started. We got Bradford with a scatter gun and a laser sight on it. We got Sophia with Old World Assault Rifle with a scope, nice one. We got Bao with a marksman's rifle and a scope. And we got Daryl with light machine gun with stock. Okay then. Well, let's get started. Quite looking forward to this. Let's look around first. So another thing the Tactical Legacy Pack includes are 28 remastered maps from XCOM 1. That's one of the things I'm really looking forward to. So let's get started. Looks like we'll be moving in this direction and we got the first group with Faceless and a Viper. All right. That's pretty rough. Well then. We could throw a grenade. Might not be worth wasting one right away, but we can do it. We might be able to hit here both the Viper and the Faceless. You know what? Let's do that. Sounds good to me. We probably won't need cover because the plan is to actually kill the Viper, but just in case. Alright, let's just start with a grenade. No one around to tell us to not use explosives. <laughs> we will not exercise restraint while using explosive. Quite the opposite, in fact. 
So that blows up cover for the Viper. And we can take a shot with Sparrow. Or we could maybe use Bradford with his shotgun. That's also an option. Might be a little bit better. The plan is to kill at least one faceless, the one on the right. We'll see about that. 84% and we are more likely to do 5 damage. Nope. Dodged. Well then. That happened. 85%. There, we got the Viper. Oh sure, now we do 6 damage. Well fine. Enemy killed. We might want to move a little bit. Or take a shot, but I will not kill the faceless. And if we don't spread out, we'll take damage on two soldiers simultaneously, which is most certainly not a good thing. I think that one is too far away to attack. Actually, no, I don't think it is. No, apparently it is not. Okay. This is actually pretty rough. Killing the Viper and one Faceless in one turn is not that easy. Well, the other one is attacking our other soldier. And he missed. I'm under fire. Yes, I noticed. Right, we need to kill both. At least try. Slash will do more damage. Oh, he also has Blade Master. Right, that makes sense. Down here. Didn't look at that part. Okay. What else do we have? Remote hacking. Squad side. And nothing on Daryl. Right. So what's the best way to do this? I can always use a pistol, but that's not guaranteed to do free damage. And we kind of need to do free damage. Come on. Okay, good. Now, can we kill the other one? Maybe, maybe not. Up to six. It is down to nine. Here, five damage. So we need four more damage. It's not guaranteed. Here, we got it. Nice. Bit of a rough start. But it's okay. Just need to get back into the swing of things. Early bird bonus, plus 400 points. Details, especially how I made it out of the base back then. I woke up in a smoking pile of rubble and crawled as far as I could. Beyond that, it was a lot of dark, bitter days in between. Alright, let's okay. move. We'll Daddy stay in to... cover, preferably. Might be a good idea to reload as well. Neutralize all hostile targets, that's our objective. Alright, let's just reload. That's the best moment to do it, when there are no hostiles in sight. We don't want to run out of ammunition mid-combat. Maybe find something to eat at the diner. Unfortunately, the aliens didn't give us a whole lot of time to look around. Doesn't look like we have any medkits. So we need to be careful about all of this. Alright, let's move. Don't use car as cover. Okay then, and overwatch, just in case someone shows up, or something. It's strange to think what it was like back then, before Advent became the front. There were plenty of aliens, but a lot less barking. Stranger still is how quickly people forgot what the real faces of the war looked like. You wouldn't think the novelty of alien invaders would ever wear off. Apparently it did, yeah. Well, we are not on a timer, so we don't really have to rush. In the early days, the faceless weren't even disguised half the time. And there were all kinds of silly-ass rumors about shape-shifting animals, vehicles, all kinds of things. That made trust even harder to come by among strangers. Okay, still nothing. That's actually a little bit surprising. Still nothing. Alright then. Fine by me. Just makes me a little bit nervous. 
Oh, there we go. We got a group on the left side. We had to make do with whatever weapons we could scrounge up. We didn't know a whole lot about the alien tech back then. I figured if we actually found anything XCOM built, at least I could count on it being pointed at the aliens first. Alright, let's be careful. We know there's a group in this direction. We need to find some good full cover, maybe. Here they are, a sectoid. Okay, let's see if we can do some damage. Come on, people. Don't disappoint me. A sectoid and two faceless. Okay, that's not too bad. Get over here. And there's another group in the back. Nice one. Come on, more. Come on, Bradford. Nice. And last shot. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. The sectoid is down to two health only. We could actually kill him with a grenade. The only problem is that if I move much closer, I will trigger the group inside the building. So let's maybe not do that. We only got 40% chance to hit him like this. Which is not great. We can move a tiny little bit closer, but not much closer. And I don't want to be too close to the faceless, for obvious reasons. So how about... Right here? No, we won't have line of sight. It should be safe to stand right here, but I'm not 100% convinced. It should be fine. Okay. So, sectoid. 34%. That is a little bit low. A little bit too low for my taste. Yeah. 40% is our best chance, apparently. Well, let's try. Could have been worse. Okay, screw it. Let's try. Nope. Oh well, whatever. Yeah, you do that. Adjust it really hard. We could probably kill it, but it might be better killing one of the faceless, to be honest. Let's take a shot with Bradford. I'll keep him slightly in the back because he's already wounded. I want to kill that one faceless at least. Surely that's not very hard. Here, we got it. And we still got one more shot. On the faceless, preferably. Well, we could try to kill the sectoid. It's one in a free chance to kill it. Screw it, let's try. No. Oh well, whatever. We should be able to kill it on our next turn. Yep, it will use a sonic ability. As you might expect. Panicked. Yeah, don't move too close. Okay, we did not trigger the other group. I was a little bit nervous about that. Now we will have to kill the faceless. While also dealing with the sectoid. If we don't kill the faceless, then it will probably kill someone. Or at least do quite a bit of damage. So, the best way to do that is open with slash. That's guaranteed to hit and it will do up to 7. I'm not really counting on a crit. Here, 5 damage, I'll take it. Daryl can finish it off, 87. Okay, good one. Wait, that's not a kill yet, is it? No. Well then, that's my last shot, I don't have much of a choice here. Here. We'll have to ignore the sectoid, I'm afraid. It might shoot us, which would be pretty bad. Okay, yeah, free damage. I can live with that. Surely we can kill it now. How hard can that possibly be? Let's open with Daryl first. Reload. I could use a grenade, but that seems like a huge waste. Whole one damage. Right, because he has stock. That's a thing. Okay, reload and then take a shot. We don't have a medkit. 
We can use it once we kill the sectoid. Come on, people. We just need to hit it once. How hard can that possibly be? I'm almost considering a grenade if we are close enough to use one. We are not. We could maybe blow up its cover. 40%. Come on. There we go. Now it's dead. Okay then. Nice. Well, let's reload. We know there's one more group inside. It had a Viper and I think a Sectoid. Now, we do have a medkit. Let's maybe heal Bradford. That sounds like a good idea. I assume he can't die. <laughs> As in, we can't lose him without losing the whole mini campaign. It doesn't mention anything about that, but you know, it's just common sense. I wonder if we could just overwatch until they come to us. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows, let's just reload. Okay. Let's wait another turn or two. We are not in a huge rush. We know they are there. Yep, here they come. Let's go, people. Come on. Shoot them. Or something. Yes, hello. Okay. Not amazing, but better than zero. Especially with a shotgun from this far away. Come on. Okay, I'll take it. Last one. This will do at least one damage because stock. Yep, one damage. So now we could kill it with a grenade. It's something to consider. It has full cover. Probably a good idea, yeah. But can we move close enough? We could also slash the sectoid. No, we are too far away. But we could slash the viper. You know what? Let's slash the viper and then we'll use grenade on the sectoid. We got a grenade on bow. We should be able to use that grenade. We can also use the actual grenade launcher from Daryl. Alright, slash the Viper. That's a granted kill right there. Down it goes. So, then the Sectoid. What's our chance to hit? 58%. But it has 8 health, so we kind of need that grenade. Now, I don't really want to stand in the open, as you might imagine. But we need to be closer than this. What's the range? Let's go here. It will almost certainly use a sonic ability, so... It shouldn't matter whether it will be able to flank us or not. And we definitely need to blow up its cover. I'm not sure if this is the last group or not. We'll find out. Here, so we got two shots. First, the marksman's rifle, 83%. Go for it. Seriously? That wasn't even remotely close. Enemy is still up. Yes, enemy is still up. And whose fault is that? Certainly not mine. Well, I can't use that Kara's cover because we will blow up. Like, straight up. We can take a shot from the left side. We will still be in range. Alright, let's do it. 94%. Unfortunately, it's not a granted kill. Here. We did kill it. Nice. And we are done. 11,000. Could have been better, but it's not a bad start. Rating excellent. Two soldiers wounded, eight enemies killed. Let's take a photo. Blast from the past. Our first stop yielded a few decent Oh, and now we can choose an upgrade. Was gonna set the world on fire. And there was only so much we could take with us. We had to travel light if we were gonna keep up this pace. I'm really liking Bradford's narration. I'm going to enjoy this a lot. Anyway, we got two options. Ranger will gain a Mimic Beacon. 
Grenadier will replace Frag Grenade with Proximity Mine, Sharpshooter will gain Battle Scanner, Specialist will gain Skulljack. Okay. Ranger will gain PCS Agility, Grenadier will gain PCS Conditioning, Sharpshooter will gain PCS Perception, and Specialist will gain PCS Speed. I think I'll go for utility items. The only downside is that we will lose the frag grenade. I kind of like having that instead of proximity mine. But we'll gain a mimic beacon, that will be amazing. Battle scanner will be quite helpful as well. And the skull jack. Yeah, let's go for utility items. So that's that. And new abilities. Medical protocol. We already had blade storm. And a long watch. Okay then. Here are the items. And that was the first mission out of seven. Here's our progress. And here's what we need for bronze, silver and gold. 80,000 score for bronze. 160,000 for silver. 220,000 for gold. We had no idea who made the map in the first place. But if there really was some kind of hidden sanctuary out there, I wanted to see it for myself. The map was steering us right through town, but we figured maybe we'd creep through the cemetery instead to keep things quiet. I tried to take a few notes just in case we forged a new path. If history was going to be written by the victors, then I at least wanted to have something ready just in case we finally got our act together. All right then. 24,000 for enemy kills. But we managed to pick up another recruit near the cemetery. As risky as it was, we needed all the help we could get. And I wasn't worried about splitting the gear another way. Once we got close, the aliens were all over us pretty quick. What we found was difficult to face. Okay, so 24,000 for enemy kills. 1,000 wounded soldier penalty, 5,000 soldier killed penalty and early bird bonus. So, who's our new recruit? Also, it's the cemetery map. <laughs> the rather infamous map. From XCOM 1. Again, this pack has 28 remastered maps from XCOM 1. That's one of the parts I'm looking forward to the most. After like hundreds of hours in XCOM 1. If not over a thousand. Okay, that's our new recruit. We got Shredder. That will probably come in handy. So, Veronica with a light machine gun. Alright, well, let's move. Shall we? In this general direction. Uh, let's not do anything crazy. We'll stay back here in full cover. Yes, I like the early bird bonus, but you know what I also like? Not getting killed. I heard that's a good idea. Well, technically we can still stay in full cover back here, but I want to be close enough. Here, that will do, and we can overwatch. Bring it on. In the two years or so since we lost the base, I hadn't heard so much as a peep about XCOM, much less run into any familiar faces. Most people never knew we existed in the first place, so there wasn't a whole lot of point in asking around. Okay, so how about we throw the battle scanner? in this general direction. Let's see what we can reveal. Yep, let's do that. Man, this is so good, playing with all these old maps. Certainly a blast from the past, in more than one way. Alright, so there's nothing so far. Oh yeah, we got something on our right. A few zombies. Alright then. Fancy looking zombies and a sectoid. Well, then, that shouldn't be a big problem. But the sectoid has full cover, which we cannot get rid of. So, our chance to hit will not be amazing. We could shoot some zombies right away. Can we flank the sectoid? Not quite, no. Can anyone do it? No. Nobody can do it. That is slightly disappointing. We can still try to take a shot at the sectoid.
but chances are it won't achieve anything. Let's at least kill a zombie or two. One damage. Okay. Not great. Next. 30% on the sectoid. Yeah, no, let's just hit the zombies. One damage again. Because of the stock. Yeah, that is not a great start, I have to say. I am not impressed. 95%. That's better. One down. So, enemy killed. And he got 400 point bonus. Come on, central. 66 on the zombie, alright. Here, we got it. Nice one. Now, about that sectoid. I assume it only has a sonic ability. That's usually what they do. Most likely, yes. Yep, that's what he's doing. We can flank it. We know it's safe ish if we go left because we used that battle scanner. That zombie seems pretty quick for a zombie. Okay. I'd seen a few zombies during the early days of the invasion, but not like this. Not up close. They were human once, but we didn't have any choice. The last place you want to run into a bunch of psychic aliens is a cemetery full of fresh. <laughs> Dumb, right? Okay, well, 183% chance to crit. Nice one. It's dead. Well done, Bradford. First group down. We actually got a target. What? Oh yeah, that zombie isn't dead, obviously. Well then, that shouldn't really be a problem. Here. It's down. I'm really liking Bradford's narration every turn so far. If all the legacy operations are like this, it's going to be amazing. Really looking forward to seeing all of this. And all the maps. I'm not sure I ever really believed in the prospect of finding survivors. And the weapons my team were after weren't going to do much on their own. Notice how I said team? That's when I started to realize what the actual payoff here was. Alright, let's move. Closing on target position now. We do still have one more battle scanner. Might be worth throwing it to see what awaits us. If we can find something. Nope, nothing over there. Well, that also means it's safe to move in that direction. Or at least safe-ish. In theory, they could be in that corner over here. Fairly unlikely, but not impossible, certainly. And we'll try to stay in full cover. I bet there's going to be something... Oh, yeah, hi. We got another sectoid. Two sectoids. Okay. Well then. We always got that Mimic Beacon. That's an option. I'm actually close enough to use Slash, but that's not a very safe thing to do. To say the least. We still got one frag grenade. Might be a good moment to use that, honestly. That's what I'm thinking right now. We also got the proximity mine. We could launch it. That might actually be a good idea. What about the frag grenade? Well, I can hit the sectoids. And we would likely destroy the cover for that one sector on the right. I won't hit the zombies, but I'm not worried about the zombies. Let's use the grenade. We might be able to kill one sectoid at least. We don't want two of our soldiers to get mind controlled at the same time. That would be really bad. Okay. So. Scatter gun. I can't even target that sectoid right now. I need to move. Veronica can't do anything. We got three more soldiers, right? No, we got two more soldiers. Yeah, this might get a little bit tricky. 
It's going to be interesting. I really don't want to stand in the open, but I actually don't have much of a choice right now. I will be out of range. Yeah, I will actually be out of range to do anything. I have to move closer and count on the sectoids using sonic abilities. They usually do that, but it's not a guarantee. Alright, let's try to stay out of range of that one. It doesn't change much, but you never know, it might. Here, we'll take a shot. 81% chance to maybe kill it. We got 40% chance to crit. A crit would do 5 damage at least. There we go, we got it. We still have a chance to kill both of them. 19,000. Okay. Well, we do have a chance to kill that one. From over here. I don't want to move too close. But it would improve our chance to hit. Still, let's not do anything overly crazy. Especially if that involves a risk of triggering it another group. 77% chance to probably kill it. There we go. We got them both. Nice one. And the zombies are definitely not close enough to hit us. 20,000 score. Looking good. 200 points. Bonus. Okay, so the zombies should be mostly a formality. Oh, Bladestorm, right. That's going to be pretty good. 21,000. I ran into plenty of people who couldn't do anything but blame us. Soldiers, politicians, doctors. We had all failed someone in one way or another. I guess I'll all right, let's reload. Best moment to do that. There's going to be at least one more group. I think exactly one more group. We still got that proximity mine. Might end up using we it, spent we'll a see. Fair amount of time together, but my new friends didn't know much about my background. To them, I was just an ex-military survivor. Another broken down veteran. As time went on, I think they started to piece it together on their own. And I didn't mind keeping them guessing. Here, we got them. Two faceless, and what else? And two zombies. Okay, that should be easy. This would be the best moment to use the proximity mine. Definitely. Yeah, this shouldn't really be a big problem. I'm thinking something like this. To focus on the faceless. Yeah, this way they will have to continue through the proximity mine. And the zombie might also go through it. It will depend on the exact order. Here. They aren't really a threat. But we will have to do quite a bit of damage. So, faceless first, I would say. Uh, actually, no, let's hit the zombie first. There we go. Central, can't really move anymore. Nope. Okay, then. Proximity mine will do 6 damage. Okay, 84, that's our best shot. We got one more shot. That will do. Here, 5 damage. So, one faceless should die from the mine. Uh, actually, yeah, they regenerate. I forgot about that part. But he'll be down to one health. Not really a problem. Wait, he was close enough to attack. Okay. That's not very nice. I don't think the other one is close enough. It's pretty easy to misjudge their range. Was he close enough? Oh, he was close enough. Well, that's not so good. That was our new soldier, Veronica. <laughs> she didn't last very long, did she? No, not really. Well, they will definitely die now. 
I think we still have one more grenade. I got this thinking about all the people I know for sure. Did we also had the mimic beacon. The Could have used the mimic beacon, I suppose. Here, got them. Kill the zombies. I'd always hope to go back there one day and put up a marker or something at least. And one more. I assume that's it. We'll be done. In before we miss. <laughs> no, we will not. Okay, then. Oh, we are not actually done yet. Okay. I thought we will be done, but apparently not. Well. We still got that Mimic Beacon. That will probably come in handy. Alright, let's reload everything first. So, reload. Alright, don't do anything overly crazy. We'll just overwatch. No more battle scanners. And let's move. I assume the next group will be last. It probably will be. Nothing just yet. We will likely get here yeah, some indication where they are in this direction. I'm just going to throw a mimic beacon as soon as we see them. Depending on what exactly it is, I guess. We still got one more proximity mine. Nope, nothing just yet. Okay then. Maybe they will find us and trigger all the overwatch. Yep, here they are. Vipers. Can we do some damage? Yes, we can. Well, we will always do some damage with stock. I think I saw a sectoid. Oh, there's a muton. Well, I'm glad I kept the mimic beacon. Because that will come in handy right about now. But we just lost Shredder, too. Nope. Pretty low chance to hit. That's a shotgun. Well, one damage. I'll take it. Better than nothing. Alright, we definitely need that Mimic Beacon. That's a no-brainer. I'm just going to use it right away. We got a Viper, a Sectoid, and a Muton. So, let's see. We probably can't deal with the Muton on this turn. Probably not. We do, however, have a grenade. We could blow up his cover while also shredding him. We don't really have to worry about standing in the open too much, as long as we kill at least one enemy on this turn. So, let's use the grenade on the Muton. That will shred him and it should destroy his cover. Okay. Light machine gun, 60%. I could use the proximity mine. That is an option. It's a tempting one. Let's take a shot first and then we'll decide. It might kill him. We could do 7 critical damage. Actually, no, we couldn't because he has one armor. Here. 4 critical damage. Yeah, proximity mine will be best. I don't think we want to move anywhere. Maybe into cover. Just in case, you know. Okay, sure. They will have to move first, that's the risk. There's no guarantee they will. But there's no guarantee we'll kill it with our weapon either. Let's go with the mine approach. Here. Hopefully, I'm not going to regret that. Yeah, it will die. Nice one. And we did 6 damage to the Sectoid. Now they should both hit the beacon. So, this isn't even the highest difficulty. I'm quite liking this. They didn't even kill the beacon. Okay, so... We do have Slash, that might even kill the Viper. 
we can always use the pistol from the flank. Yeah, let's do that. We only need two damage, and the pistol is guaranteed to do two damage as long as it hits. Yep, that's a granted kill right there. Then Bradford can hit the Viper. That might even kill it. Yep, that's that. So, that was quite fun. Shame we lost Veronica, but not a bad outcome. 28,000 score. The ones that helped me get to this point. I wouldn't be here without their sacrifice. 15 out of 15 enemies killed. Zero soldiers wounded, so that part is nice. Yeah, zero soldiers wounded. <laughs> I would say a killed soldier is a pretty serious wound, but alright. We had gotten used to I know what it means, it's just point. funny. We picked through just about everything left on the alien bodies. So, experimental ammo types. Sharpshooter will replace battle scanner with AP rounds. Ranger will replace mimic beacon with talon rounds. Grenadier will gain tracer rounds. And specialist will replace skulljack with blue screen rounds. Okay, that means there will be robotic enemies. Or we can gain the flashbang grenade instead of frag. Incendiary grenade instead of proximity mine. And EMP grenade. That is actually a pretty tough choice. I think I'll go with experimental ammo types. This will be really nice. Talon rounds on the ranger are really good. AP rounds are nice. Tracer rounds will allow us to get holo targeting up. And blue screen rounds will be amazing against anything robotic. So let's go with that then. Here. So. Revival protocol on our specialist, Shadow Strike on Bradford, Dead Eye on Sharpshooter, I'm not a fan of Dead Eye. Suppression on our Grenadier. Okay, and Demolition. Oh yeah, Demolition will be pretty damn good. Alright then. So, here's our progress. The map was driving us towards what looked to be some kind of freight yard. But first we had to cut across the edge of town near a local dive bar. I remember being genuinely excited at the prospect of finding a nice, stiff drink. Unfortunately, the arrival of Advent had ushered in a new era of restrictions and bans, which meant pretty much anything that you might consider fun was outlawed. Still, there was a chance I might find something good out there in the boonies. Okay then, looks like we got a replacement. But it looked like we had just missed the action. With all the hallmarks of an advent sweep gone south. In those days, they were rounding up stragglers pretty aggressively. And it didn't take much to provoke a fight. We never did find out who it was, but odds are they were either convinced to move to a city center, or dumped in a mass grave somewhere. So, we got Claire, T-Rex. That's the best nickname ever. And she has a magnetic weapon now. With trace rounds, advanced stock, and advanced expanded magazine. Okay, looks like everyone has magnetic weapons. However, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, or a dislike if you didn't. And I'll see you next time for more Bradford's adventures. Bye bye.